The video conferencing service Zoom has seen a huge surge in popularity and usage recently, as the novel coronavirus is pushing more people into remote work environments. People are also using it for everything, from book clubs to lunchtime hangouts with friends. These tips highlight some of Zoom's best features and will help you get the most out of your video calls. If you don't typically join a lot of video conferencing calls, brush up on some basic etiquette. Mute your mic. When you're not talking, mute your microphone. With groups of more than three people, it's essential etiquette. It's also good practice no matter your group size if you have children, pets, or frequent unexpected noises in your environment, like street noise. Use headphones. Headphones and a microphone make calls sound so much better for everyone. Even an inexpensive pair helps. If you don't have a microphone, still use headphones, really. Test your audio, mic, and video. Launch Zoom before a call to check and test your equipment. In the desktop app, click your profile image, go to settings, and audio. Choose the right input and output for your audio and mic. Test them, then navigate to video and do the same for your camera. Touch up your appearance. Face filters aren't just for Instagram and TikTok. Zoom has a tool called Touch Up My Appearance that adds a soft focus to your video which smooths your skin. You can see it right here enabled in the left and disabled on the right. You need Zoom version 4.0 or later for Mac OS, Windows, or iOS to get this feature. Zoom remembers this setting for the future too. If you join a meeting and forget to enable it ahead of time, you can still do it, although people might notice. Simply click the arrow next to the video icon and select Video Settings, then touch up My Appearance. Make sure there's no strong light behind you as well, such as a window. That'll affect the camera exposure and put your face in the dark, which can be distracting to others. See who joined your Zoom meeting. Educators using Zoom or those hosting large presentations for business sometimes need to know exactly who attended a call. The way to get that list is to run a report after the meeting ends. Not everyone can generate this report. You must be either the host of the meeting, in a role with usage reports enabled, or the account administrator or owner. Additionally, you need a pro API partner, business, or education plan. To get the report, log into Zoom in a web browser, go to account management, then reports. Under usage reports, click meeting. You should see a list of previous meetings as well as any upcoming meetings you have scheduled. Look for report type and choose registration report or poll report. Find the meeting you need and click Generate. Zoom then takes you to report queues where you can download the list of attendees as a CSV file. Add a virtual background. With Zoom, you can take a video call from a messy room and hide it by adding a virtual background. This feature works best if you have a green screen, but it's not even bad if you don't. Zoom gives you a few backgrounds to use. You can also upload your own images. It can be a landscape, cityscape, or even your organization's logo. This feature appears in the settings under a tab called Virtual Background. Add a Zoom poll. Add a poll to your Zoom meeting to quickly collect responses from people about a topic. If you're new to working remotely, they can also make a Zoom call more fun or serve as a quick icebreaker. You can also use polls for more pertinent information. Before you can make a poll, you must enable the feature in Zoom from your web account, not the desktop account. The instructions for how to enable polls vary slightly based on whether you have a personal account or are an administrator of a group account. Use Zoom instead of Slack calls. Slack is one of the most popular tools for helping teams communicate, especially when people aren't in the same location. Not everyone loves Slack's built-in audio and video calling, however. You can connect Zoom to your Slack app and use it instead for calls. Just connect Zoom as a Slack app and the rest is easy. Have attendees fill out a form before joining your Zoom meeting. Depending on how you use Zoom, you might not know who will join your call or details about them, such as their background or what they hope to get out of the call. One way to collect information from attendees is to require them to fill out a form before joining. You can ask for general information such as name and email address or create a custom form. To create a custom form, the host must have a licensed account and the meeting cannot use your personal meeting ID. If you meet those requirements, open the Zoom web portal and choose Meetings. Either pick an upcoming meeting or schedule a new meeting here. Next, check the box next to Registration Required. After that, look for a section called Branding, where you can create your form. You can even add a banner and logo. You also have the option to have Zoom automatically approve everyone who shows up for the meeting and fills out the form or you can review the forms and approve attendees as you see fit. Discuss and annotate visuals in your Zoom meeting. 
If you are working remotely and need to collaborate on visual materials, you can use Zoom to share an image and annotate it with others on the call. You can also mark up a whiteboard. If you are the meeting host, you can enable or disable annotation for all the attendees. Either way, you need to use the Zoom web portal, not the desktop app, and enable it for yourself. It's under Account Settings, Meeting tab, then Meeting Basic. Record your Zoom meeting. Say you're holding a Zoom meeting to share important information with all your colleagues, employees, or clients. It's possible that not everyone can attend. With Zoom, you can record the meeting and thereby have a video that you can share so people can watch it in their own time. Recording a meeting is also helpful if you need to later transcribe notes from the meeting or learn from it, such as through a critique of the presenter's skills. Before you record a meeting, it's proper etiquette and, in some instances, required by law that you disclose to the attendees that their audio and video may be recorded as well, depending on whether and how they participate. You can save your recorded video locally or to a cloud storage service such as Dropbox. Zoom has detailed instructions for how to record a video of your meeting, including a list of options for customizing what and how you record. Although Zoom has been working to solve the problem of Zoom bombing, there are still some steps you should take to protect your meeting. Use a unique ID for large or public Zoom calls. When you create a Zoom account, the app assigns you a personal meeting ID, or PMI. It's a numeric code that you can give out to people when you want to meet with them. You can use it over and over, and it doesn't expire. For standing meetings with a team or a weekly check-in, using the same code makes sense because people can join without having to hunt down this week's login number. It's always the same. Zoom also gives you the option to not use your PMI for a meeting and instead generate a unique code. If you're the host of a large Zoom call where members of the public or other strangers are invited, it's much better to use a one-time code rather than your PMI. Once you put your PMI into the world, people can use it to try and jump in on your Zoom calls at any time. When you schedule a Zoom meeting, look for the meeting ID options and choose Generate Automatically. Doing so plugs up one of the biggest holes that Zoom bombers can exploit. Lock a meeting once it starts. If you start a meeting and everyone you expect to join has, you can lock the meeting from new participants. While the meeting is running, navigate to the bottom of the screen and click Manage Participants. The Participants panel will open. At the bottom, choose More, then Lock Meeting. For more useful tech tips, visit PCMag.com.